to you, Uke. The way you take care of a smart guy and make it look like an accident. Uh, he's plenty sorry. He hijacked us. A few gallons of gas won't last long climbing like that. And there won't be any evidence left when those gas tanks we shut off explode. Did you see his face when I told him he was making history? The first guy that ever took himself for a ride. <laughs> Connie, Columbia Mail Service. Hello, this is Constable Kelly. What's going on over there? Uh, the boys are uh, celebrating Loden's birthday. They're playing cowboys and Indians. I guess our radio feed was open by the day. Happy birthday! How about no, you, 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 Happy birthday! birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Lower down, boys. Constable Kelly thinks we're making too much noise. Well, it sounded like your pilot, Roof George, calling for help from the air. No, Roos right here. That's his plane warming up. Yes, I'll tell Roos not to fly if he's got a snoot full. Well, as long as you haven't got any ships in the air, shut that sending set off. You're right, Constable. We don't want to lose our broadcasting license. I'll turn the switch off right away.
We'll report the plane missing. Later. I wonder if that money suspects anything. We'll find that out. July 18th. Shortwave radio disturbance. Investigation disclosed radio key of your Con and Columbia mail service left open by mistake, and loud noise of drunken party came over. July 19th. Nothing to report. Marching on review. On their mouth they sit with pride. Volley sabers by their side. Color passing by. The yellow stripe came back too quick. Marching men are on parade. Open up, Kelly. I'm a day ahead of schedule, and uh, I have some important work to do. I came to see Constable Kelly. Well, I'm somebody else. I, I thought you were somebody else. And if I were somebody else, would that give you the right to... Just who did you think I was? Well, I thought you were two other guys. Uh, excuse me, but I didn't know you two knew each other that well. Hey! Let that be a lesson to you, Constable. And never go on circumstantial evidence. Uh, believe it or not, Kelly, I've never met the lady. Oh, allow me. Miss Howard, may I present Sergeant Renfrew of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. At the moment, unmounted. Before Sergeant Renfrew thought I was two other people, I came to tell you about Mr. Benton. What about him? Oh, Benton's the mine superintendent for Louise. Well, the boys don't know where he's gone. He's been missing for three days. Does he drink? Oh, no. He's been Dad's superintendent for years, loyal and very reliable. Have you a photograph of Benton? Why, yes. There's one in his cabin taken with his sister. Good. I'll go with you and get it. Oh, but uh, we don't need a photograph. I can describe him accurately. Why, Kelly, don't you think it would be a nice gesture if some member of the force escorted Miss Howard home? Well, I certainly do. Let's go. Oh, but I wouldn't dream of taking you away from your reports. Besides, I think the seriousness of the situation merits my... Uh, <coughs> personal and undivided attention. Thank you anyway, but I'm not going home just now. <laughs> I'll have one of the boys send the picture over. Uh, just a moment. You mentioned Benton's sister. Where does she live? In Marbletown. That's funny, I never thought of that. Perhaps that's where he's gone. Uh, we'll broadcast a search for him anyway. Romeo Renfrew, the next time you decide to put on a little romantic wrestling match, please don't break up my family heirloom. But I couldn't help it. I was jumped in the dark. Nice girls like Louise don't go around jumping strange men in the dark. But it was two other, I mean, it was two men. One of them clubbed me. Then the other came at me with a long knife. What? No big bad wolf? It must have been after you. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> Tell me more. But I... Hello, Constable Kelly speaking. Oh, uh, yes, Inspector. Renfrew just arrived. It's for you, Romeo. Sergeant Romeo, uh, S Sergeant Renfrew speaking. Don't forget to tell me, Inspector, how you were jumped in the dark by two big naughty men. Yes, Inspector, I'll make a report on it. 
The Yukon and Columbia Mail Service reported another plane missing to the Aeronautics Bureau. The inspector suggests we look into it. I warned them not to allow that pilot to fly if he was drunk. Come on, you can tell me about it on the way over. When's that new pilot coming in? He's due any time now. Uh-oh, don't look now, but the law just rode in. This is Sergeant Renfrew, Yuke. He wants to talk to you. How do you do? The inspector wants me to make a report on your missing plane. Oh, be glad to be of any help. Be with you in a minute. Loden, how many hours this motor had? About 300. You better give it a complete major overhaul. Of course, it doesn't need it, but I like our equipment to be perfect. Okay. This is the second accident you've had in three months, isn't it? Yes, it's too bad. Gasoline and liquor don't mix, especially at high altitudes. If Roof George crashed because he was drunk, it's your fault. I told you not to let him fly. Yes, you did. But Roof flew his own plane. He got paid for each flight he made. He got sore and wouldn't let me ground him. Well, I suppose gold is your most valuable cargo out here. Where do you generally fly it? Tip for the miners who use the Raymond Mill. It generally goes to Vancouver. Must be the new pilot. Man, can he fly? What little control we have over fool pilots like that. Bill Shipley? Yeah. It's a swell landing you made there, fella. Thanks, guy. Bill I Shipley. ran through. <laughs> you sway back all plug you. You antiquated rum hoisting sour. Uh -huh. Kelly, this is Bill Shipley. Hi, pardon the glove. And you, Cordeau, your boss. Glad to meet you. How are you? Drop around and see us at Kelly's cabin when you get settled, will you, Bill? It's a date. It's well. Great guy, that. Let's go in the office. Okay. Understanding with my pilots first, so nobody gets hurt afterwards. I guess you can't figure the angle on Renfrew and me. We went to training school together. But don't worry, we're on the opposite sides of the fence now. We ain't got much use for them out in our business, and I wouldn't be too friendly with them. Hey, wait a minute. I'll fly your stuff, keep my mouth shut, and give you an honest count. But what I do on my time, that's my business. All right, Shipley. You may be a pretty smart guy, but remember what I just told you. Request all stations search for James S. Benton, mine superintendent, missing since Tuesday, about 38 years old and white. That is all. Hold it. The boys will bring in a million white men, each 38 years old. Benton is closer to 45, 205 pounds, 6 feet 2, callous, powerful hands, bleached gray hair, wrinkled around the eyes and stooped shoulders. That is all. Hey, did you, uh, did you ever see Benton? Nope. 
Well, you can hardly see him in the snapshot. How'd you describe him so perfectly? It's elementary, my dear Watson. A mine superintendent has to be a big fellow to boss tough miners. The shafts and gold mines are small and low. Consequently, a big fellow gets stoop-shouldered bending. Well, uh, but where do you see any wrinkles around his eyes? Benton has spent most of his life out of doors, squinting into our northern sun. Ah, I get it. Then that accounts for the bleached hair. No, that comes from being around powerful chemicals. Well, anyway, I hope our broadcast finds Benton. Well, it won't because he isn't lost. Benton is probably doing something he doesn't want anyone to know anything about. Not even Miss Howard. Come in. Come in. Why don't you answer the door when I knock you deep? Folks call me Whispering Smith, and I just wondered if I could see part of the reward. Keep what? I said, folks call me, they want to keep this as part of the reward. You see, I'm building me a little, hang on to that, will you? I'm building me a little house out in back of my cabin, and I thought I'd keep this for a nice, comfortable seat. Cheers, he must have located the airplane. Hey, where is the wrecked plane? Huh? Where is the plane? Wrecked with pain? Oh, no, I, I'm perfectly healthy. Where did you get that tire? Yes, uh, where did you get the tire? Tired? Oh, I ain't tired. I'm just as comfortable as could be. Where is the plane? Did it burn? Was the pilot dead? Uh, how'd you find it? Well, don't yell at me. I ain't deep, too. Would you like to know where the plane is? Yes. Huh? Did you see the crash? Hey, cash! No, I found it! No, look, look, look. <laughs> well, I ain't got time to play no games. I came here to give you information about the airplane. Now, I was just coming from my traps. Ain't nothing in the consarn things anymore. Trapping ain't like it was in the old days. Where is your trap? I remember an 88. Uh, huh? Where is your trap? Where? Bear? No, there ain't no bear in this part of the country. Mostly a fox and otter and beaver. More beaver than there used to be. They, like, once in it, what? Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Are you sure I'll get the reward? I'm not in a position to say. You ain't gonna pay. I'm not in a position to say. Well, I do. I'm going nuts with this old hawk. Hawk, how did you know the plain hawk's point? Miss Howard was worried about you. Where have you been? I took a truckload of our ore to the mill at Fort Pioneer. Yes? I can't understand how that happened. I can. I've seen a lot of tricks in my time. And it isn't hard to have two plates instead of one picking up gold in your milling machine. Yes, but my record They can be fixed. And you can ship the gold across the border. I'll sue you for this, Benton. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. I figured out, on your statements, you owe us over $20,000. I'll make good. Or I'll see that you do. I was listening, boss. What do you want done with that last guy? Better see that he disappears. Permanently, this time. Well, he certainly gave us a description. For my doll, a tree's a tree and a rock's a rock. When we're spring! <laughs> Well, I'll look on this side, and you follow the ridge. Right.
what's that? Drunk flying. And aviation gets the blame for another accident. Poor fellow. Whether he was drunk or not, the stick was set for a climb when he crashed. Well, it might have been pushed back when he hit. Was Roof George a good pilot? One of the best, formerly with the Royal Flying Corps. I wonder if he had enough gas. Maybe he forgot to turn it on. An experienced pilot, drunk or sober, wouldn't commit suicide that way. He'd go over the side. Close tight. You can see the teeth marks of the plier. It looks like someone else forgot to turn it on. Well, if it isn't old Nick, the frying pan kid. Not old St. Nick himself. Hello, boy. Say, uh, Santa Claus, have you seen a gorgeous, beautiful doll with sparkling blue eyes? Sure. Sure, I don't think so. If uh, you're speaking of Louise, Nick, have you seen a gorgeous doll with sparkling brown eyes? Sam answer. Sure, I don't think so. You know, that's uh, the trouble with you, Renfro. You're not very observant. The night has a million eyes that shine so brightly. But none compare with the light in her eyes, so bonny blue. There's Phil Brown. How about betting your next month's pay on it? You're on against a hamburger smothered with onions. She's tall and thin, her legs are bandy, her ears are big, her hair is sandy. But what can I do? My weakness is eyes of blue. She's pigeon-toed, has fallen arches. Her walk is stiff, as stiff as starches. I confess it's true. My weakness is eyes of blue. Now she's so far from being a beauty. Temperamental and high-strung. Never meant to be a cutie. Fell on her head when she was young. Her eyes are crossed, her teeth are missing. Her lips are chapped, no good for kissing. But what can I do? My weakness is eyes of blue. Oh, we should give this to Kelly. She just lost the bet. A very complimentary ballad, Sergeant. Oh, well, uh, really, the song really was written for Kelly's girl, uh, Peggy. Won't you join us? Oh. Hi, boy. Oh, hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. And Miss Howard and Mr. Shipley, the one-man flying circuit. How do you do? How do you do? Pull up a chair. Thanks. Oh, you girls don't stand a chance with Bill. He's in love with the lady up in the clouds. That's me. Say, you know this reunion calls for a little celebration. Hey, Nick, what do you all have? Uh, we've ordered, thanks. Well, uh, make mine a double ride. Yes, sir. Say, Benton, why didn't you tell Miss Howard where you were going? Because I thought I was being watched. Now I can tell her. I've got the proof. Do you know where she went in town? No, she didn't say. But I'll find her. Flying for Raymond is quite a come down for a big time pilot, isn't it? <laughs> Does this look like old Bill's stage to come down? Thanks, Nick. Keep the change. No, no. Party's on Kelly. He just lost a bet and he's feeling particularly blue. Uh, being is now it is on me. A little music, Nick. May I? Sorry, boy. Renfrew, how long is it going to be before they make you a major? Why? Well, look at you, a sergeant. No home, no door, no future. Oh, I suppose I like the force as much as you like flying, Bill. 
Will you forget for a minute that I have on a uniform and let me talk to you as one friend to another? Go ahead, shoot. There are 400 freight transport flyers in the Dominion flying under the severest difficulties in all kinds of weather. No maps, no radio beams, nothing but blizzards and storms constantly fighting ice. That's why they need good pilots like me, yeah? And pay me good dough, too. No, Bill. Flyers who fly machinery, mail, and groceries don't make as much money in a year as you just had in your fist. I don't get you. I think you do. I'm sorry you signed to fly for youth. There's something mysterious about his last crash. Well, I hate to see you getting mixed up in any trouble. Don't worry about old man Chipley. He can take good care of himself, my boy. Just a little friendly advice. Now I'll put him back on the uniform. Oh, Miss Louise, I've been looking all over town for you. Yes, Henry, what is it? Mr. Benton just returned, and he'd like to see you as quickly as possible. Oh, I'm so glad. Is he in his cabin? Yes, he is. Hello, Bill. Nick, another double ride, please. Please go in the other room. Another accident. I guess you didn't know it was loaded. Sir Kelly, go outside and look around, see if you can find anything suspicious. Well, what could be suspicious about an accidental death? Did anyone offer to buy your mine? Why, yes. We hadn't been making money, and Mr. Raymond of the milling company said it was no job for a girl, so... He offered to take the mine off my hand because of his friendship for my father. But how did you know? Oh, just a guess. I thought you ought to know what the Yellow Stripe told Shipley about us. He doesn't know a thing. If he did, he'd take us in. I couldn't figure out what he meant. Maybe you can tell me. He said he wasn't so sure that Roof George's crash was accidental. He can't prove it. Yeah, but what did he mean by that? Nothing at all. Just a lot of cheap talk. Go on, what else did he say? He just inferred that it looked phony for a high-priced pilot like me to be flying freight. Can I see him in a boss? I was just leaving. Along, boys. I just saw some lights flashing around the mill. Looks like the yellow stripes checking up on us. If it is the yellow stripes, let them have it. We've got a right to shoot prowlers. I used to work around the gold diggings during my school vacation. The miners always complained about the milling plants cheating them. Why don't you write the sad, sad story of your life instead of taking me away from my favorite detective program? One of the easiest tricks to get away with is the hidden quicksilver plate that catches the gold as it goes through. Oh, when I was a boy. Oh, when you were a boy. That was such a long time ago, Renfrew. Besides, everything's on the up and up now. 
If I can find out their trick of cheating, I think I can pin Benton's murder on them. See what you can find in there, Kelly. I uh, think I got something. Kelly, you amaze me. I can't understand why Raymond would have a receipt for the purchase of airplane parts. Why, ah, that's simple. Uke has been posing as the owner of the plane service when it really belongs to Raymond. Well, even if it is true, you can't arrest Raymond for that. No, but it would explain why they use high-priced pilots like Bill Shipley to fly the gold they steal from the miners back over the border. But they recognized us last night. Sure they did. And if Raymond were honest, he'd report the prowlers to the police, wouldn't he? Well, yes, but... But they didn't. And he won't. Because he's guilty. Well, then why don't we take them in right away, if you're so sure? Because I want to try and prove they murdered Ruth George. Well, how's our hijacking their gold going to prove that? If they think Shipley hijacked it, I have a hunch they'll try and crash him like they did Ruth George. Nothing but wild imagination. You've been reading too many detective magazines, Renfrew. That crash is still an accident to me. I'm sorry we have to do this to Bill Shipley, but... Well, I'll give him an even break and warn him.
But Nick was telling me at breakfast this morning about his friend Benton. He killed himself while cleaning a loaded gun. That was kind of dumb, wasn't it? Listen, Shipley, you just do your flying and keep your mouth shut. And remember what I told you about your yellow striped friends. Yellow stripe. Hi, you. Hello, Bill. Hi. Taking off? Yeah. Just a minute, boys. You mind if I check your cargo? Well, nobody ever checked us like this before. What's the idea, Sergeant? Oh, just routine, old man. Part of the report I'm making on the plane you reported missing. That's your manifest. Check these first. We want to get loaded. I'll get to them in just a minute. Any gold being shipped? I don't see any listed. Well, what you see is what we're shipping. Let's get going. We're late now. Oh, I mustn't forget these. Well, I guess those are in order. Uh, say, Bill. Yeah? Remember how we used to harmonize before you were busted out of the training school? Oh, sure. Uh, how did that old Grey Goose song go? Uh, oh, yes, I remember. Aunt Hattie had an old gray goose, she fed it lots of corn. It wandered out upon the road on one Sunday morn. Oh, go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, the old gray goose is dead. Oh, Aunt Hattie's gonna take it mighty hard, and she'll miss that old gray goose. Around the yard. So go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, the old gray goose is dead. Aunt Hattie loved that old gray goose, it was her joy and pride, until the old goose saw the gander on the other side. Oh, go tell Aunt Hattie. Go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, the old gray goose is dead. Never more she'll answer to Aunt Hattie's call. And we'll have to turn her picture to the wall. So go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie, go tell Aunt Hattie. The old gray goose is dead. So long, you nightingale. Finds the gold, I'm going to let him have it. If you don't mind, Shipley, I'd like to see your license. What's the big idea? You know very well my license is okay. The uniform's off, Bill. Take my advice. When you get where you're going, stay there and don't come back. Thanks, Park.
I came to get the reward and my just desserts. For just desserts? We have a rice pudding with raisin, chocolate pudding without a raisin, a strawberry pie, pumpkin pie, any kind of pie. But then we have no ice cream, no whipped cream, no watermelon, no fruits of any kind. We have no banana. And what you say? Now, what do you want? The boys give me a bad steer. I don't give you a bad steer. I give you a very good steer meat. T-bone steak, the club steak, the rib steak and with gravy, palm steak, ham steak, tenderloin steak and without the gravy. Maybe you like a pork chop and me chop and Well, where is he? Who, the steer? Huh? He's dead. Good, tell him I'm here. Say, what kind of talk is this? I tell you, he's dead and you tell me to tell him you are here. Over at the airport, they told me he was feeding here. Who? Huh? Who? Who? That's it, who is Yuki, Buki, Duki, uh, that must be the name, Yuki. Most idiotic name I ever heard in my life, Yuki. Hey, come here, man. You looking for me? No, I don't want anything to eat. I'm you. Huh? My name is you. Yuki, well, why didn't you say so in the first place? If you're Yuki, I come to get the reward. What reward? Outside of this tire, how much reward do I get for finding your airplane? Where is it? That ain't enough. Where is it? I... Well, I told them mounted police and they went out and looked it over, didn't you, boys? Let's go to my office. And now don't rush me. Let's go to your office. I want that reward. <laughs> I know what you want. Hamburgo strabiliante. I got them in a frying pan and we'll be ready in a few seconds. <laughs> oh, um, allow me. Hey, you know, you looked plenty worried when he found out we checked that plane crash. But why? Because I think that Roof George was murdered. Oh, but uh, everyone says that poor Roof was drunk, that it was an accident. <laughs> oh, that's good. It was no more of an accident than your superintendent's death. I think that was murder, too. Hey! Are you sure? Uh, if he were sure, he'd make some arrest. It's just a theory, isn't it, Constable Kelly? Oh, yeah, that's uh, just my idea. Raymond Milling Company? Oh, yes, Ben. Sand? A dirty hijacker. We'll take care of him if he ever shows up around here again. Those yellow spikes are really getting in my hair. They checked on the roof charge crash. And Seattle just phoned that Shipley delivered sand instead of gold. So, he's working with the yellow stripes. Looks that way. After you left Nick's place, Kelly shot his face off to that Howard girl. Hinted we murdered Ruth, George, and Benton. That Frenet gang was clever, too. They kidnapped a wealthy trapper named LeDuc. Made it appear he had joined the gang by leaving one of his articles at each scene of crime. Yeah, what happened? Oh, the force wasn't fooled for long. One of the boys mushed into the Hudson Bay territory for nine months. Came out with LeDuc and uh, the rest of the gang that were left after the fight. Did you hear something? Yeah, it sounded like some prowling animal. They got a lot of them around here lately. They uh, smell my good cooking. Mountain men are on parade. Scarlet-coated cavalcade. Take the guard! Blaring trumpets blow, drums beating through, passing on review. Take the guard! On their mouth they sit with pride, polished sabers by their side. Take the guard! Colors passing by on a his head. Mounted men are on parade. <laughs> you know, 
you uh, almost broke the bunk. These things remind me of the first time I ever rode on a Pullman. That train was jerking back and forth so much, I'll swear the engineer was teaching his wife how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Shipley, he's coming down. Well, you're wrong, Loden. If it's Shipley, he's going up. You mean like Roof George? Fix up his crate. Well, he won't have much gas left anyhow. The old gray goose is dead. Boom. Cheer up, Logan. The world isn't coming to an end yet. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I'll take care of him. There's your gold receipt. Oh, I don't know. This night flying makes me hungry and sleepy. <clears throat> I'll come back later for the payoff, huh? You'll get your payoff now, stool pigeon. What's this? You'll get paid off. The same way that other double-crossing hijacking Ruth George got it. You mean you crashed him? That's right. And he wasn't working for your Monty friends either. But give me a chance to explain. Look, what have I done? What's holding up the joyride? The motor will be warm enough in a minute. Traps made fools of us. We shot at dummies last night, and I just saw a Mountie heading this way. We'll take the other plane. Smokey will take you into Long for the Muscade. We'll pick you up in St. George. Okay. 
situation, eh? Well, I'll see that the Dominion pays for it. Give me that rifle. Sister. Read it. Sergeant Renfrew, Royal Northwest Mounted Police Flying Corps will be pleased on your recommendation to accept the application for pilot of Mr. William Shipley, John W. Burton Inspector. 